The night darkens. The wind howls. There's a cold that cuts through you like a knife, and your nerves quiver against your bones. But if you think that leaving downtown Uniontown means escaping the spirits, think again. Fayette County was their home before it was yours, and they're not about to go away. Years ago, Fayette County was a place of extreme wealth, power, and influence. A place where the rich lived large, took risks, and played hard. These were the people who influenced their communities long after their deaths. At times, if you stand still long enough in one of the many public cemeteries, you may feel a chill run down your spine. But the grounds where we lay our dead to rest are not the only chilling places around. In fact, some of the places that seem the most safe and the most docile are ripe with restless souls. The Carnegie Free Library in Connorsville is an old building, 110 years old to be exact. The building seems innocent enough until you hear the rumors, the rumors of what's underneath the building. You see, the library, built perhaps to offset a guilty conscience of one of America's richest men, was built over the site of the former Connell graveyard, and legend has it that bodies still remain in the cold ground below. Maybe that explains it. Maybe that explains the sound of footsteps upstairs when the library is empty. Books mysteriously going off the shelves, visions of apparitions. Look through a window of the library, and you just might see an old woman cloaked in a tattered head covering, a babushka of sorts. Who is she? Maybe she was the victim of a murder or a sudden death. Maybe she stays because her loved ones still mourn her demise. Maybe she's afraid to pass over to the other side because she doesn't know if her mortal sins would take her to heaven or to hell. And what if you travel the winding national road as it leads you up the mountain in the thicket of fog? Why, you'll find the Mount Washington Tavern, a resting place for weary stagecoach travelers, all of whose bodies have since been ravaged by death. Unexplainable footsteps. Bodiless footsteps can be heard in the tavern today. Sinister laughs. Sometimes doors open. Doors that had been shut. The smell of cigar smoke fills the air. Several visitors claim to have seen or felt something very unnerving near the bassinet in the tavern. Who is trying to communicate with them? What are they trying to say? One guest saw a tall, heavy-set man with a black, stubby mustache materialize behind the tavern's large wooden bar. He wore a white shirt and a white apron, and his skin was pale. He seemed disturbed when he realized he could be seen. But Fayette Countians have been seeing ghosts and feeling their presence for centuries. Well, there's dearly departed Polly Williams. You might not know her name, but she knows yours. The tale of Polly Williams takes us to the haunted white rock of Fairchance. Let's allow an old poem to do the explaining. Behold with pity you that pass by, here do the bones of Polly Williams lie, who was cut off in tender bloom by a vile wretch, her pretended groom. Yes, sweet Polly was taken from us before her 19th birthday. Her passing was far from peaceful. She met her doom in a dreadful fall, and everyone wondered if her fiancé, Philip Rogers, pushed her. You see, Philip had promised to take her as his wife, but kept putting her off. He finally asked her to see him at their favorite meeting spot, the top of White Rock. Did Philip's temper get the best of him? Or did Polly jump to her death in devastation? No one knows, because dead women tell no tales. Today, she roams Chestnut Ridge searching for her lover through the fog and the mist. 
you can still see deep scratches from Sweet Polly's fingers digging into the sandstone cliff. She won't rest until that diamond ring is on her cold, dead finger. Oh, and speaking of rest, you rest well tonight. Sweet dreams.